Welcome to the Mentawai Islands. Although these remote islands are famous for surfing, it's also home to the original people, the Mentawai, who live quite differently. I've joined a group to spend the next three nights at a traditional house and the local sikere or shaman, Tagogo, will be our guide teaching us his traditional way of life. Hey, if you want to try durian, this is the place to do it. Okay, young durian. It is, oh, it does have a peanutty flavor. Also that you can eat tree and that it's really good. Good morning from our house in Mentawai. This morning has felt a little bit early, but also really quite nice. People here sleep in until the sun comes up and the roosters wake them up, which is somewhere between 4.30 and 5.30. And we were told we didn't need to be up until 9, but I think most of us got up around 6 o'clock. This morning we've done so much before 9 o'clock. Over breakfast we learned so much about the culture and now we're getting ready to go out into the jungle. We're going to learn how to make the loincloth. been great but we've brought our own and we aren't eating traditional food from the area. The Mentawai people traditionally don't eat a lot of meat. However, they may fish, hunt deer or wild pigs, small animals and sometimes monkey at night. But also, they eat whatever fruit is in season. Right now it's durian and sagu which is the fiber from a tree. So Togoho took us out to show how he chooses a tree. That fiber then dries and is shredded and then his wife <laughs> continues to work with it. Now here on Mentawai, a lot of people eat seasonally and hyper-locally. So right now is durian season and they're eating lots of durian and I've learned a lot about the differences. Uh, there are small ones that are very young and they almost taste like a, a peanutty flavor and it replaces bread. There are also sweet ones, there are some creamy ones, there's lots of durian around. The dogs and the pigs love it and there's just lots of it to try. If you want to try durian, this is the place to do it. Okay, young durian. It's like the no ripe peanut. the ripe durian. They like it, but not like as this. Ini lah mereka lebih suka. It is. Oh, it does have a peanutty flavor, yeah. like a the shell. Yeah, the texture is a bit like that. Mm. Yeah. Hey, come on! The traditional loincloth to go go wears is actually made from wood. He strips a tree, then cleans it in the river and pounds the material dry to flatten it. Once it's dried, it can be dyed and turned into a loincloth. Heading back out this afternoon to find a sago tree, which we're gonna eat later tonight for dinner. Oh, because it just rained, it's super <laughs> muddy. A 
Oh wow, we did not have to walk far at all, which is good because it's starting to pour. This is sago. This yeah, is sago tree. Sago. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> Um, they do not eat the pigs generally or the chickens because those are used for currency. The other thing that is consistent throughout the year is this, this is sago. And so I was really interested in this because um, it's a tree. They, they actually eat tree and I didn't know what it would be like and it's fascinating. They cut down the tree and then they almost grate it and then they take the moisture out of it and then they grind it again until it's like a powder and then they cook it two ways. One, they put it in a banana leaf or they can also put it in bamboo. Bamboo takes a little bit longer so it depends on how quickly they want to cook and then they grill it over the fire. And so what happens here is You get something like this. So it becomes very malleable, but I asked how they eat it, and they pretty much eat it this, these two ways. We had it last night, and you can see, uh, I'll break it up. It's a little bit like glutinous because of the way that they process it. And then you just eat it. So they just eat it like this. And it's almost like a baguette. Like it's very crunchy on the outside and it's a little bit chewy on the inside. So it's like a really good small baguette. I think the bamboo one, which would be bigger, would be even more like a baguette. They eat it raw. Last night I ate it with uh, sauce and it was really tasty. So they eat this and again, all the animals eat it. When they were processing it for us yesterday, they took the remainder out back and I saw that the chickens were all over it. They were really wanting to eat it. Now. They showed us how to process it, but the truth is every culture, every community finds progress. And so generally where the processing facility is to grade it and make it uh, so that you can do this with it is where I was two days ago in a house. It's just more efficient for one place to make a lot of it than every household making a little bit of it. But it was really interesting to see how it's done and also that you can eat tree and that it's really good. Although there are a lot of pigs around, the Mentawai rarely eat them. In fact, they're used to barter for things they may need. But some of the people in our group offered to buy one for everyone to share that evening. The most interesting part was the moment that Togogo sacrifices the animal, but also first pays respect to it. Wow! This is roasting a pig quickly. So now that it's in pieces, you're going to cook it. Yeah. How do you cook it? Uh, fried onion. Mm-hmm. To make the oil, I will call it the soup. Ah, you're going to make it soup. Yeah. And then you took some and you put it in the bamboo to cook as well. No, and, uh, Oh, cool. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Tokoko shows us how to make dagi, which is a traditional poison that uses a number of roots and spices and they use it to hunt with in the area. Poison is deadly and so no one wants to go near it. 
it is used only for hunting. They put it on the end of a spear and it kills an animal in 30 seconds. Today we are going on another walk. This one is an hour and we're going to another person's house. There are two, I think, sikorots there. I'll see. And half the group is going. So I think a lot of people have got tired of the hiking, but one of the nice things about making these videos is that it kind of pushes me to do things. I mean, when am I gonna be here again? Very muddy today. I've already followed once, <laughs> about two minutes in. I don't think we're here yet, but we are somewhere. <laughs> this could be a durian stop. <laughs> it's a durian stop? <laughs> Yay! Boom! All right, this might give us a little bit of time anyway. Everyone is very fast, except for me. <laughs> That's okay, it's okay to be the slowest. Of his older brother. Someone's house, not ours. Not the one we're going to. Apparently, the one we're seeing is much larger. It's just a little bit more dry here, which is amazing. So, most people are very far ahead of me. But you know, I think you have to try things even if you're not going to be good at them. I'm not good at this, but I'm trying. And I'm glad I'm doing it instead of just staying home because Let's try it! Hello, Rita! Andre! I like walking in the water better. <laughs> it is beautiful today. Oh, and it's deep. Instead of like a ladder, they build these. They carve these stairs out of a log. A little bit tricky to get used to, but much better than trying to walk up this hill. Just as I said that I fell down that hill, they're a little bit slippery. I don't know if this is the place, but I really hope so. All right. Let's try this again. <laughs> All right, and this place is used, it's an extended family, so anytime there are holidays. This is the party area yeah. to dance. <laughs> Oh, we've got some sago, and then all of these pieces of wood here are for people and also for the pigs, I would assume, if they have pigs here, because it's easier to walk on. Oh, they do have pigs, and how I know is this is what you hit to call the pigs to let them know it's time to eat, and they'll just come back. So domesticated but free-range pigs. Looks like they have a small pen there. Okay, so fourth house we're visiting, I've visited since being here. It's really interesting. There are a couple of traditional things here that at first you're like, ah, and then it, it's really interesting to learn about it. So uh, Mentawai people are primarily animists. They believe in animal spirits and that's why would they pray before they take the lives. And um, when you come into a house, facing inward, you will see domesticated animal skulls so you'll see the pigs and they're facing inward to guide the other animals that are still living back to the house although they're fed and so they also come with a bell and then on the other side or midway through the house you'll see um, wild animals like monkeys and venison animals like that they are facing inward as well and that is 
Uh, so the spirits guide also the monkeys and the venison within the jungle because they're only eating what they can find in the jungle. They don't eat rice unless there are tourists here. They just eat the sago and whatever is in season. It's really, really interesting. Another interesting point is when you get married, uh, it's an arranged marriage and a man essentially has to pay for his wife. And so if he doesn't have the money but still wants to marry because it's an arranged marriage or families agree, the man has to live in the wife's house until he can afford to pay all the uncles off. And then once he pays, he can take his bride. Divorcing, women get nothing, although I think it's starting to be 50-50 according to Indonesian law. And then if the man dies and they have children, the property goes to the male offspring. If there are no male offspring, it goes back to the uncles. That's the owner. Cookie? Cookie. Ah, and so Cookie is a shaman. Yeah. And, but where is he right now? Oh, uh, in the garden, the forest. Oh, he's yeah. out there somewhere. Yeah, to find our durian. Oh, to find durian, makes sense. All right, we're leaving today. So to get here when we first arrived, I think it took us two and a half hours, probably three. It was in the dark. I had never walked on logs before. It was very muddy. I felt like I was going to fall into a deep hole of mud several times, needed to be rescued. Uh, but coming back, I think it only took us an hour. In just four days, I've become better at walking on logs, avoiding the mud. Still quite muddy though. I, I fell. I fell many times. We're just about to take the boat to head back to the main village, but I wanted to give some highlights, lowlights. Uh, highlights, absolutely. The people, so friendly, so nice. A lot of them speak Indonesian. A couple speak a bit of English, so Andy here was able to really help me. He was amazing. And those who couldn't, you made, you know, you just made it work. It was just really lovely that they opened up their homes, their lives to us, and they were so kind, so curious. Uh, also, just learning. This was not easy for me, physically, mentally. Um, it was not easy. I think for a normal person it would be, but I guess I'm just not used to roughing it. But even in the four days coming back here and being able to walk in the logs and fall fewer times, being faster at it, I felt like I had kind of gained some experience, some strength, and so that was awesome. Uh, I would definitely recommend doing this. This was just a really great experience, and so when Ronnie asked me if I wanted to join this tour, I didn't realize I would meet so many great people, not only the Mental Y, but also this group of girls who are so inspiring and really welcomed to me, shared with me, shared all of their delicious food, and um, had a lot of laughs. So. But Mental Y Fun does not end with the end of this video because I'm actually sticking around for four more days. I'm not gonna take the Saturday ferry tomorrow. I'm going to take the Tuesday ferry. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work. I've just asked some people for some help to plan some things. And so it's gonna be a surprise for me, a surprise for you. I will take you along the way. So I hope you watch the next video about the Mental Y Islands. Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.